go live. Ready. not me. It must be you. You must have the coolers on. Oh, mother. <laughs> oh, the coolers. Always the coolers. One of these days, when we go to shut off the coolers before the show, we will end up shutting all the power off to the store since it's right near that I switch. Did it. I, I know. Big switch. I know. It, just almost about grabbed it. You just almost need to put a little like red tape on it because it's going to happen one of these days. And we lose the whole show. The whole show. Done. Hello, everybody. It's a lot of stuff. Well, let's, uh, should we get rolling? I should have given you, should have given you the sound effects today, Finn. That's what I should have done. I know. Are they here or do, are they there? Uh, they're with me. <laughs> uh, welcome, everybody, to uh, the 45th edition of the Breeks Coffee, Wine, and Treat Show. Hard to believe we already are at 45. I'm starting to get those sort of deja vu -y feelings as we turn the calendar closer and closer into March. I don't know, for whatever reason, I have a very clear, vivid picture of what I was doing almost every day last year in March. It was just such a weird, surreal experience, uh, and a lot happened. And I, I think I literally remember day by day what I was doing. What to do with 50 pounds worth of tomatoes and 150 gallons of milk? <laughs> right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good times. Uh, thanks for joining us. We have a uh, fun uh, bunch of things to talk about tonight. Um, we have been hard at work on our virtual tasting calendar, as it were. Um, got a couple new events posted there that we'll talk about towards the end of the show tonight. But as we typically get started with a wine, we're going to get started with a wine. And this is um, uh, was our email special for the week. Uh, it is built off of our number one selling rosé in 2020. Correct? Correct me if I'm wrong. Right. Yeah. Uh, the Villa Rose uh, Sparkling Pinot Noir Rosé um, is the wine. And maybe Finn, tell us a little bit about it. And, and I'm curious to get your opinion uh, as to, other than that we really we really banged the drum on the, on the rosé last summer, why you think that rosé was our number one rosé seller in 2020? Well, in part because of Pinot Noir um, and there are so many variations of rosés now that you see that come out from anywhere from Barbera to Zinfandel to the classics of Grenache and Cinso and things like that from Provence. Um, the Pinot Noir rosé kind of was that perfect middle wine. It wasn't uber fruity like a, like a Zin rosé or a Merlot rosé. It wasn't like overly forward. And it was an austere and citrusy, like like a Provencal, you know, like very very dry style. Um, it was it, it was the sweet spot. It was something you could just drink all night. Yeah. So. And we also, I mean, probably didn't hurt that we ran quite a few fantastic deals on it <laughs> throughout <No. laughs> uh, a good chunk of the summer. But it was great. And so anyway, uh, we chose this sparkling wine. Obviously. Um, well, not obviously. We chose it because we felt it was a great uh, bottle of wine to celebrate perhaps the upcoming uh, Valentine's Day holiday this weekend. But what else can you tell us about uh, the, Villa, the folks from Villa Wolf? So uh, Villa Wolf is owned by Dr. Ernst Lucen. Um, he was Decanter's winemaker of the year. I think he was winemaker of the year for another tabloid out there. Um, he's just whatever he touches 
turns to gold. He's a very, very good winemaker. Um, he's actually visited Madison once. He, uh, he visited me on a construction site, actually. <laughs> but he's a great guy, super, super nice guy. And um, they bought this estate in the Falls area. It's a 370-year-old winery um, that they really didn't mess with the, the, uh, the vineyards themselves. They're more minimalist as far as their approach to the fruit letting the, the plants do what they need to do. It was more of rehabbing the sellers themselves and bringing it into more of a modern age uh, technologically. And um, this wine is, uh, is done in a Charmant style. So it really has a nice soft textural bubble to it. Um, and it really pushes the strawberry aromatics like right up in the nose. And that's why I thought this was gonna be a great one for chocolate and Valentine's Day. For sure, yeah. it would. Uh, be a smoking pairing with any kind of chocolate chocolate dip fruit I think was the thing that we maybe suggested um, earlier to uh, in the to the email group this morning or some Shulin's love bug chocolate Ooh, yeah. with, with the dried strawberries on the back there you go that's what I, that's what I have here it doesn't look good are you throwing are you throwing that combination down or are you do you actually have yeah, one of those I'm, I'm, I'm snacking on it right now nice nice <laughs> So the uh, Villa Wolf Sparkling Pinot Noir Rosé is out there and available for sale on the BriggsMarket.com website. If you go into the events section and look under um, CWT, which is Coffee, Wine, and Treats, the show that you're watching right now, uh, under the February 10, 10 show section, all the stuff we're going to talk about tonight is out there and available for purchase, including this uh, sparkling wine, which typically sits just a little bit priced above our wall of 100 pricing uh, at uh, 16.99 a bottle. And the deal pricing um, sort of while it lasts, because I know there is a limited number of these bottles out there, um, is 12, uh, 12.99. So it's a, huge, um, it's a huge deal. And I do believe, Finn, um, we got a pretty good chunk of it uh, in the stores. We sold a ton of it this morning. Yep. Um, and uh, there's a couple stores I have to already reorder for for Friday. Yeah, so if you if if you do get out there and you're not able to get it, uh, let us know. Finn and I will be able to hook you up. And as he said, we're going to be getting more of that in. Um, I think we're maxed out about 20 cases total. Okay, and then I think that was effectively it, from what yeah. I understood. That's yeah, one. It's it, it's not a big production for them. Yeah, it's more of a a notch in your belt romantic thing to do is to make a sparkling wine. Uh, most people make sparkling wine, uh, unless you're the big names, they don't make money at it. It's just more of a passion project. Cool. Well, this is certainly uh, it's something, a passion to take advantage of because it's it's uh, super tasty. Yeah. So uh, if we switch gears a little bit, typically we leave our, our uh, given that this is the coffee wine and treat show, we typically leave the coffee for last, but let's, we're going we're gonna to talk coffee uh, we're going to talk coffee first, and um, this was sort of a little bit of a last-minute hell mary because it's kind of going through, to looking at some of the things that we've done, we haven't done in a while. And the Brazil, uh, one of our like core, I would call it backbone coffees, um, was one we hadn't talked about since basically last March. It was one of the first. Uh, it was in one of the first shows. Well, so, it's it's a perfect time for it because. Literally, both of the two different Brazils that we use um, are fresh crop. They just came in, so this this new Brazil has really got a nice pop to it. Yeah. So the coffee is our Brazil Reserva Natural, and maybe Finn, tell people a little bit about maybe why we've we actually bring two different kinds of Brazil in, and the kinds of things that we use it for. And I know that's a long list, but maybe keep it to the you know the, the, the core because it really is all over the place in our coffee portfolio. It is, uh, we call it the, uh, yeah, it is the backbone. It's a backbone to uh, uh, several of our blends. It's just known for its its nice medium uh, weight that, that sits on the palate and much more of that chocolatey kind of tone to it. So it really rounds out the back of a lot of our, of our blends. And it is, um, it is, uh, it 
you know, it depends on where you're from. If you're on the West Coast, Brazil is, is rare because um, they don't get Brazilian coffees because of the long haul. Um, so we actually get uh, our Brazils from the East Coast. Um, and so if you go New York side of the US, uh, you know, East Coast, you'll see a lot of roasters using Brazil. But you go to California, Seattle, Portland, they don't get a lot of Brazil, Vancouver, um, and they tend not to use it. And uh, we're just lucky that our master roaster of, of yore um, was a person that was passionate about Brazil and, and kind of stuck with us. For sure. And you, uh, did you mention basically the two different versions and what we're, we bring these two in like to, to do for our, our blends and so forth? The, like I say, it's not, we don't use a Brazil in as a, as a dominant. It's more about giving body and weight and breadth to the palate because it's a really rich, medium weight coffee that kind of covers the, covers that palate. Yeah, I mean, it, it is, it fills in the, you know, not acidic, not heavy body necessarily. It's sort of square in the center of your tongue. Yeah, very smooth. Very smooth. So uh, the Brazil Reserva Natural um, is also out there and available for sale on the, the website. The deal that we typically run with a lot of our mainline coffees is a kind of buy two, get one free deal, which is a killer, killer deal. And especially if, like many, you're at home making coffee for yourself. Um, you should give the Brazil a try. It's 20, 27, $28 for uh, three bags. Uh, and that's a pretty huge discount off of what it would be typically 42 ish bucks for the three. So um, it's medium body. Uh, as Finn said, it's just, it's, there's a lot of medium to it, but it's like got a lot of coffee character to it. Um, and it's, you know, just a very easy to drink um, easy to drink cup of coffee. I don't know. That's that's pretty much the best way to describe it. E middle of the road. Uh, okay, so that is coffee. That is a little bit of wine. And let's um, maybe switch gears and talk a little bit about our tastings. Um, and since, I tell you what, Finn, let's maybe just swap it up a little bit. Since Michelle is here, uh, I saw her peek her head in just a quick second ago. Um, we'll uh, talk uh, the event that we've got coming up on the 19th. Um, so this is the fourth, third or fourth week that we've been um, talking about the Prisoner Wine event, uh, which is going to take place on um, Friday, uh, February 19th, 7 o'clock. We, we tried pretty hard to get this event uh, squared away for um, uh, Valentine's Day and now have, for the third or fourth week in a row, sort of laughed at ourselves that we we picked a wine called the prisoner uh, to celebrate a holiday like Val like Valentine's Day which I'm sure Michelle is going to tell us a little bit about uh, but she is here um, to talk a little bit uh, give us a little more perspective on prisoner what we can expect on Friday the 19th and let me see if I can bring her in here there we go hi. hello Michelle <laughs> hi Finn hi Matt hey. how you doing hi everyone <laughs> <laughs> hello thanks for joining us Thank you for having us and supporting our great wines. So, absolutely. What do you want to know about Prisoner? Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> I, yeah, I bet. Maybe just I, I'm just kind of curious in sort of your your thought behind why this has become such a sort of iconic wine brand in in, in particular in the U.S. It's unbelievable. Um, We're celebrating the 19th vintage this year of Prisoner, wow. and we'll be going uh, this fall, coming fall. Uh, will be 20 years. And who would have thought looking at the label and Finn, I see some bottles in front of you. So can you pick up one? Because I, I, I've been crazy all day, but that is a print of from Franciscan Goya. It's a copy and he was a mid century, um, mid 1800s Spanish artist from Madrid who only painted very morose and grotesque work um and this is one the le petit brisene is a print from an 82 piece series called disaster of war so you asked me this question how did it become so popular i mean i ask every time i do an event i ask our customers 
what is it? <laughs> we were one of the first to have an artistic label, right? Nothing on the label tells you what it is, right? And uh, even varietals, you don't really quite know where it is now on the back legally. You have to have a couple things. You have to have the appellation, you have to have the vintage, alcohol content. But the grape varietals have always been something very intriguing to me for consumers because I've been in the business for over 20 years now and our base for the red blend is pretty much um, Zinfandel. And when David Finney decided to create this brand, you know, over 20 years ago, he really wanted to celebrate the heirloom varietal movement. What I mean by that are all these varietals that are not indigenous to this country that have come over from folks in the mid 1800s settling in California, really they came to pan for gold uh, in the new country. They wanted to become rich. Good thing they brought some rootstock with them because, okay. you know, they had farming in their background. So it was easy for them to make some type of living, you know? And mm -hmm. so anyway, Zinfandel. Zinfandel is the main varietal. And we know now, you know, uh, that the Sonoma Coast is packed with Zinfandel, uh, at least at the initial plantings. Uh, but Prisoner, FYI, we are in Napa Valley Winery. Our winery itself sits there on Highway 29 in Gallarin, which next when uh, next Friday, you will see Chrissy Whitman, our director of winemaking. She will be talking to you from the winery. And, you know, I just think that this was a wine our public was waiting for. Um, it's very fruit forward, very little oak. We release it exactly a year after the harvest it only sees about eight months in barrel so it's not you know it, it, the tannins are very very soft and then we're working with varietals that are very appealing to pa the palate zinfandel whether the consumers know that or not i mean but i i used to sell a, a couple zins and it, they were hard sells but i think it's the other varietals that our winemaking team blends and and that's why this is a red blend because it's not by law 76 percent zin but the majority is zin i don't know percentages because that has always been locked up by the way prisoner is one of the most counterfeited wines ever anybody with anyone has tried to emulate it and they've never become successful well first of all they don't have the 80 different family farms that we've been working with and these are farms that really established themselves in california five and six generations you know so they have su sustainability behind them they have ageability but some of the other varietals um are Syrah and Petit Syrah, and that tends to really blend that mouth feel. And then depending on the vintage, Chrissy will add maybe a little Cab or a little Merlot. Like I said, vintage is, is always important that, for taste profile. And then the clincher is she'll blend a few percents of Charbonneau. And I love Charbonneau. I, I'm sure you guys have had a producer too. And also on our website, we have 100% Charbonneau from Myers Ranch um, that Chrissy does. And mm. Charbonneau just gives that. And Charbonneau for the audience out there is a, it's an old Western Italian grape varietal. Definitely came over in someone's suitcase. It used to make the big jug wine red, you know, the three, three liter gallons. Um, you know, um, we don't talk about those much anymore because we're all drinking a lot better. But it was that big red. And it just gives a little nuance, I think. It gives a nice little palate appeal. It cuts down some of the flavors and it softens it up. It juices mm -hmm. up a bit in a yeah. natural way. And then Prisoner Only Sees, eight months. I might have mentioned that, but it's very soft. So it was popular. I think folks were looking for something. It's big and juicy. It's very, you know, um, diverse. I mean, you can have it with a dinner or I'm doing a dinner tomorrow evening uh, where we're going to save it for last and we're going to serve it with a dessert, you cool. know, and so there, or like I like to say, it's a patio pounder. You can drink it without thinking much of it, you know, just some nibbles. My, okay? my, my experience, uh, like selling it is oftentimes people um, who are going to make that sort of next step to buying a, an expensive bottle of wine. Mm -hmm. It's an easy thing to sell them because you know, it's, you know, they're going to enjoy it. Um, 
and even if they don't necessarily have a lot of red wine drinking experience. Um, it's a fun wine to sell too. And, and yeah. folks always like it. It's a great gift. As I can see, you all have the, uh, the three box gift sets. And they, I thought that that was like so perfect when they decided to do that this year. You know, a perfect hostess gift, a perfect gift to give someone who has everything. And it's going to be great for our tasting. This sure. year, the Chard we're introducing a prisoner Chardonnay and a prisoner Cabernet. And they're very much same in style, like that real roundness on the palate. Um, again, a, a, a lot of different producers um, that we're using in our family of farmers that we've been working with for the last 20 years. Uh, the other thing is some folks out there might be very familiar with the portfolio. We do another shard called Snitch and we do another Cabernet called Cuttings, but the profile completely different and different fruit sourcing as well as different oak time and just the composition of what goes into the blend of both of those. And and I know Christy's going to go into details next week with those as well. Perfect. We're excited. And so we see because of this iconic label how important it is. Um, and, and, and that's what the consumer wants. They reach for it. You know, they love it. Um, we've done some consumer studies where folks, you know, we throw out this question, like what would happen if prisoner went away? Folks don't want it to go away and we're not planning on it. But, you know, you'll see an expansion with the portfolio. So it's a very exciting time with cool. us, you know. Well, yeah, we're excited to get a chance to try um, yeah. these new arrivals from you guys. And I think the, uh, the gift pack set, as Michelle was alluding to, oh. it's a, it is a three pack, um, three, 300 half bottles, so 375 milliliter bottles. Um, mm -hmm. And it's a great, I mean, it's perfect for this kind of venue uh, and pretty fired up to uh, get a chance to talk to Chrissy more about uh, kind of her thought process and what goes into making this super iconic wine brand. Right, because when we talk Chard and we talk Cabernet, it's not like your traditional, say, Napa Valley. It's prisoner in style. So I'll leave you all with that. And I want to welcome everyone to join us next Friday. And I thank you very much for your time and your evening tonight, too. You know, any more questions, uh, you know, or we'll save them for next week. How about that? We'll, we'll save them for next week. Unless, Finn, you had anything that you wanted to ask? No, no, no. I, I, I you know. We're going to give away half the show if we keep going. So. Oh, I know. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. I really appreciate you coming on and talking to us. Be safe and be warm. Take Thanks care. Thanks you as well. Cheers. Bye. Awesome. Well, there you go. So that is the exclusive virtual tasting experience with Prisoner Wine Company. Um, somebody from Chrissy, who she had mentioned, is going to be here from the Prisoner Wine Company. Uh, it's ninety four ninety nine. It's a great valentine's day gift if you have been procrastinating and cannot figure out what you are going to get that special someone um it's cheaper than stud earrings it's, stud earrings. it's true it's cheaper and it's an experience it's an experience that's right you can both enjoy it. uh that is the 19th friday seven o'clock grab it out there on the bricksmarket.com website okay uh let's switch gears a little bit but also geared towards Valentine's Day. This is perhaps something. This could be the palate kind of warmer upper. Um, we're doing an event. Uh, this should be fun. Uh, an event with uh, the folks from uh, Shulin's Chocolate and Wisconsin Brewing Company. This coming Saturday at six. Uh, every year at about this time, uh, Wisconsin Brewing releases um, a couple different beers. Uh, Cupid's Envy. Ooh, Finn is drinking one. That is dark and very good looking. I will have to say. It's like cake. It is like cake. Uh, cake. Cupid's Envy and Cupid's Revenge. Uh, these are two different beers that you are able to pre-order from the Wisconsin Brewing website. In fact, if you go to the tasting pack that I'm gonna to talk to you about in a quick second, it has links to the spot on the Wisconsin Brewing website. But you buy the beers, um, you buy the tasting pack, and then on uh, Friday, tomorrow and Saturday, Friday and Saturday, um, the next two days, no, today's Wednesday. We've got a couple more days. Yeah, Friday, yeah two, two days from now, Friday, Friday and Saturday, the, the 12th and 13th, you head over to Wisconsin Brewing at the time you designated and you pick up a tasting pack, both for our tasting pack and the beers. And then that Saturday at six o'clock, uh, you get a, this like trifecta here. You've got 
um, Kirby Nelson, who is the brew the the beer king at Wisconsin Brewing Company. Um, we have uh, uh, Michelle Thiessen, who's the daughter of the owner of Shulin's Chocolate. And then we have uh, David Wheatley, who is the gentleman who uh, is in charge of the coffee roasting uh, at Barrique's. Um, and maybe Finn, can you walk us through our portion of the tasting pack? It doesn't include the beer, but it includes all the great things that you will want to eat and drink with the beer. So when you pull through the drive-through to grab your four pack of the various beers, and I'll have to point out the Cupid's Revenge. I think it's a great package. That's cool. It's really, it's very cool. Um, and uh, you'll get a little Valentine's Day gift for your lover, beer lover. <laughs> um, which has the Shulin's Love Bug Chocolate, along with their Columbia Cafe Bar, which they make with our Colombian coffee, and their number one selling bar, uh, Wisconsin Butter. Uh, also in there, uh, from out of our kitchen, our chefs over in Pittsburgh are putting together our once a year release, the same with Cupid's Envy. We always do it for WBC exclusively, is the Barrique's uh, Bacon Candy which is addictive in itself. Um, you, you have to kind of pull yourself away because you end up eating too much. Uh, along with a uh, bag of the Portageau coffee, which is the base coffee that goes into making the Cupid's Envy and Cupid's Revenge. So you grab your four pack, grab your little Valentine's Day satchel of chocolate and coffee, and uh, we will get you a Zoom link and uh, we will have fun on Saturday night. Yeah, 6, 6 p.m. Yep. Uh, is the start time with that. Uh, the tasting pack from us is twenty four ninety nine, and that's a full bag of our coffee, as Finn said, the chocolate bars, bacon candy, and the chocolate squares, all different flavors from Shulin's that Finn had walked, walked through just there a minute ago. You buy that on our website, you can click the link through to buy the beer from Wisconsin Distributing, and then we'll get you that link. That should be a lot of fun. Oh yeah, just say, you know, it's 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 gonna be fun and, and laid back and lively and just kind of a you know, it's Saturday night and let's kick back and just kind of enjoy beer. That's right. I I, I will have to say it's a really good beer and it's great with chocolate because I'm having it with the chocolate bar. So awesome. So that is uh, this coming Saturday. There is still time to go and purchase that stuff. Uh, this is a top to bottom all Madison uh, gift extravaganza right there. So um, you're, you're supporting a bunch of local um, local Wisconsin businesses, certainly in Madison area businesses, and we, uh, we'd really appreciate your support in that. Uh, moving forward a little bit in the calendar then, um, Aus Austrian wine, which is not something that we often t find ourselves talking about. Um, the Schloss, Schl <laughs> I haven't even been drinking. <laughs> Schloss Kellerai. So, Goebbelsberg or Goebbelsberger. There we go. Yep. Uh, Austrian wine tasting um, will be the following week. It's uh, February 26th. That's another Friday. Um, there's a two pack as the base tasting pack. That's 36 bucks, I want to say. And you can add two additional uh, bottles to that. Uh, this should also be cool. This, you know, we, we, it was a little bit of a struggle earlier in the fall to get European winemakers on because of harvest and things like that. Now we're, we, I think we're going to get, have a little better opportunity. Um, this is one of the first ones to hopefully crack that, although we're not talking to the winemaker in this case. Um, but, uh, but it should be a lot of fun. And I don't know if, and I don't, uh, normally drink Austrian wine. So what are like, what's the defining character? Like when you're trying to speak to somebody about these wines, uh, what is it that the Goldsberg wines show? For those of you out there that know me, um, I, I I'm not much of a collector of wine uh, so much. Um, I just I believe in enjoying wines uh, just for the sake of enjoying them. Um, but Goldsberg is the one white wine that I actually buy and collect bottles from various vintages and different vineyards. It's it's very, very historical estate. And the 
the best way to describe their wines is very poignant. I mean, they are so, it's like a, a well, they're Austrian, but like a Swiss timepiece. They're so immaculately built and designed and flavor profile. They just don't make a mistake. I mean, they, I, I think they would burn the buildings to the ground if they made sent out a bottle of wine that didn't taste awesome because they are so good at what they do. Cool. That's a great selling point right there. <laughs> so that makes me thirsty just uh, thinking about it. So that is the 26th of uh, February at seven o'clock. You can get those tasting packs, albeit I believe uh, one of the wine, everything is in to, as of today, oh, right? We are, uh, we're one week off of getting the, the Cistern Rosé. Right, there you go. I did yeah. actually, I hope, hope I put that in the description. I will after we get done here. If we I have time. Know. Yeah, we have time. You have time, we have time. And then, uh, like warp speeding away in a different part of the globe, different hemisphere. Um, this should be cool. I, I have not met Steve Bird before. I don't know if any of you uh, had a chance to meet him. No, they're they're brand new. Okay. Um, to Wisconsin, this is this is a new winery. Um, Look, and it looks like very much a family affair. This is a like like it kind of reminds me probably of what maybe like the Four Graces was before. Um, before Foley bought them. Yeah, uh, Steve Bird is actually, he's uh, part of the indigenous people of New Zealand or the Polynesian part. And their winery is on the North Island. And he is very, very in tune to the, their society and their global effect and, and how their winery works. And, He's a, he's a sounds like a really really amazing guy, um, and really involved in New Zealand winemaking and really knows what's going on out there. So yeah, we have kind of a classic pairing of uh, New Zealand wines from uh, uh, Steve Bird. Uh, we have their um, Sauv Blanc, their Rosé, and their Pinot as the uh, base tasting pack. And then there is his uh, signature Steve Bird Pinot, which is the fourth bottle you can buy for a few extra bucks. Um, but it should be really interesting, as Finn was saying, like heavy, heavy uh, environmental impact focus uh, for uh, these folks and their brand. Um, so it should be it should be interesting to see what they have to say. We've had a few cool conversations over the last number of months on everything from biodynamics to organics to just, you know, how wineries can positively impact the environment. Um, this should be, this should be pretty neat. So that's the Zoom Steve Bird uh, New Zealand uh, t tasting pack that is out there. That event is on one of the greatest days in the world, March 5th, uh, <laughs> Friday, 7 p.m. Mark it on your calendar. Lots of great things have happened on the 5th of March in history. Make sure you bring a cake. Make sure you bring a cake. That's right. All right, so that is our tasting list. So you got uh, Cupid's Envy tasting pack coming up uh, this weekend. We're doing Prisoner of the Weekend after that, Austrian wine on the 26th of February. And then March 5th, we go down to New Zealand with Steve Bird himself, by the way, who will be typing in. What, what kind of time difference is that? It's got to be 7 o'clock. Uh, on a Friday night is 2 p.m. in the afternoon. Wow. Yeah. Okay, cool. A little day drinking for us. We have, we have more winemakers lined up uh, going through March. Um, so we have a lot of cool, we're, we're, we're jet setting back and forth across the globe. Awesome. Uh, I know a lot of people out there who are listening to this live have been to our tastings, which we very greatly appreciate. But if you haven't, I uh, can't recommend them enough. They are a lot of fun. Let's finish up with a little bit of love gin. Love gin. Speaking of going back in time to past CWT episodes, I couldn't resist pulling out the love gin for this love-filled weekend. The love gin, this is the only thing that is a little disappointing to me about the love gin, Finn. Okay? The name and everything, super great. The bottle is one of the best it's one of those things you can after you finish it you you can find a use for this awesome ceramic bottle the gin tastes like no other gin that i've ever had it's just not quite as pink as it needs to be that's the only thing remember when we, we poured this out in our glass it just didn't quite have enough pink 
Yeah, I, well, I think if they really wanted to get a, 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 a solid pink, they wouldn't have to add like a chemical color or something like that. But they do it naturally, I think, with uh, rose hips. Yeah, yeah. So, and I'm obviously a little, little I don't kidding. Know how well you can extract rose hip color. If it were purely pink, I would actually wonder what in the heck it is I'm, we're, we're drinking. Uh, maybe just a quick lowdown on the, the Love Gin, why it is such a different sort of tasting profile. And I guess it's partially those rose hips. Um, I would say it's a, it's a much fresher style of gin. Um, you know, it's not your uber junipery green style of gin. Um, this is definitely much more of a sipping gin. I think it's, it's a much prettier gin. Um, it doesn't necessarily demand tonic or a mixer if you didn't want to do that, to serve it straight up. Uh, it's a really, you know, like I say, it's a, it's a much fresher, um, friendlier style of gin. You know, it doesn't make you pucker. Doesn't I, re I remember when we were trying it uh, when we first featured it? I'm pretty positive we took the bottle home and I looked really hard to find that bottle when we were getting we were talking about this last week and uh, that's I think I think we finished that bottle. It's easy to drink. And I think some people who had picked it up at the last go around replenished their stock on the special because we shot through all the stock at Monroe Street. In short of a day, so I had to order more. So yeah, yeah, the, it is on. We run a little deal on this. Typically thirty-seven dollars a bottle. Um, you can get it for thirty-two, so four four dollar uh, thirty-two ninety-nine. So basically a four dollar um, a bottle savings, which is a pretty darn good deal, uh, and just fun if you're in, into trying uh, gins of sort of different style. This is definitely one that should uh, be on your list. I think that's it. That's a wrap. Did we miss anything? I don't think so. I think we got it all. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> thank you, thank you everybody for joining us tonight. Uh, stay tuned next week Wednesday. Will we be in the same place? We'll be in the same place next Wednesday. Yes. Yes, we will be in the same place. That's good. Episode we have four. trivia coming. Oh yeah, that's right. We do have trivia coming. We'll get that out on the site in the next day or so. Uh, but episode forty-six next week Wednesday. Please join us. Bring your friends. Come to one of our tastings. Uh, thanks for all your support. Stay warm, and we'll see you all next week. Cheers. Cheers. Have a good night.